I've been trying. I was trying for a long, long time to meet uh, to meet uh, um, another transsexual. Because of course, I was telling myself if I want to be really intimate with someone, if I want to be close with someone, if I really want someone who will understand me, who will be nice with me, who will exactly know what I want and exactly where I want it, uh, it has to be somebody who's like of my own gender. And somebody of my own gender means it's another transsexual. I think it's it's definitely an orientation, and I've been aware of it. I feel it's an orientation. I've written it down somewhere in my journals as a separate orientation. The obvious thing is that being an orientation is that if it isn't an orientation, then why are all these straight men specifically attracted to us? And they are. And they and they really are. I mean, it's not just the straight ones who are curious about us and want to fuck us for one night and then go. Ugh! But the, or the ones who want to fuck us for a couple of times so they can tell their friends. There are others who fall in love with us and want to be, spend the rest of their lives with us knowing our backgrounds. There's something about us that is there and that is attractive. Anyways, I went up to Woody's, and I was, you know, dressed as I am normally, dressed as a woman, fine. And this guy started calling me Miss. Miss, that was it. And I said, it's not Miss, it's Miss. He said, oh no, it's Miss. I said, no, it's not, it's Miss. Oh, how about Princess? And I said, this is really serious. I'm a transsexual. This is not a joke. This is life and death. How dare you tell me what you can call me? I was very, very angry very pissed off that this damn fucking pig asshole dickhead fag thought he could call and tell me me what I am I mean how would he get off on having how did you know how would he feel at straights calling him what telling him what he is I mean this is what I really bo really bothers me about the gay a lot of gay men is their real hypocrisy when they're the first ones to scream when somebody does something to them but they have no problems about discriminating and, and being very prejudiced and very creepy to other groups, other disadvantaged groups, such as us. Do you feel that you're taken seriously as a woman, as a transsexual, gender-described woman, by members of the gay community? Here, much more than uh, in Montreal, because still in Montreal, they've seen me as for years as, a, as something that's trying to look like a male, and, and not even. <laughs> So like it's it's like not really not in Montreal. I wasn't taken seriously now much more because they see me and they see like oh yes there's something going on with her. But um, but here I think in certain ways yes and in certain ways no. Like they don't have the choice when they see me they go like yes she's nice yes she passes really well and like it's like you know they cannot they cannot like laugh about me they, you know what I mean like they were able to do this. A long time ago, but not anymore. They cannot laugh about me. It's like, look, she, look at the wig, makeup she's wearing. Look at the ugly dresses or ugly clothes she's wearing. Look at the ugly wig she's wearing. And you know, they cannot do this. So it's really hard for them to bitch me around. Mm -hmm. But they can still do it. Doesn't mean they're not. They, it doesn't mean they don't have the the idea and the desire to do it. I'm but it's just I'm harder for them. <laughs> One of the questions I also was thinking when you were talking. Keep on saying something. Yeah. It's, it's that an accident that you no, use? No, it's not an accident because I think for people we're something, we're not somebody, so we're not mm -hmm. a person. Okay. We're a thing, we're, an, we're a thing, a weird thing in between or, you know, so that's mm -hmm. why you need to say something. Actually, before they just used to not approach me at all. So, so uh, because there was we talked about the misogyny and feminophobia of gay men. So um, of course I wasn't um, somebody who was 
sexually attractive, even though I was really nice, even though I was really funny, mm -hmm. even though I was really nice to have as have a friend and really like him to have my male name as a friend. It was it was like it was like 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 he's really nice, but we would certainly not sleep with him. So um, so that's it. Well, what I was gonna say something. And it's really weird because they used to do not touch me and do not approach me and do not prove me anything. And when I started to go out as a woman, like after work, I was always going to a gay bar to have a beer or a drink. I used to have like lots of gay men smiling at me, and somebody I was suddenly I was somewhat somebody suddenly I was I was existing, and also sexually I was existing. Not which doesn't mean that they wanted to sleep with me would just mean that they were aware that I, like, I had a nice body, me too, it was just a different body. And of course, like, it would, there's something that pisses me off in gay men. It's like they really would like to touch you, to grab you, to dance with you, to French kiss you even in front of all the fags and bars because it's kind of really in and cool to touch like a drag queen or a transsexual or something that looks like a woman in front of all the fags because we, we should not forget that fags eroticize a lot, straight acting and straight acting men and straight attitude and straight sex and everything. So like, like to be able to show the fags that they are grabbing and they're able to dance, they're not scared to dance with and French kiss with and grab the ass of something, that, something who looks like a woman or a genetic woman. All of a sudden, the enormous big hugs that I had to be given by all these gay men and the big kisses and I had to be had to receive that I never got as a gay man that all of a sudden I was getting as a woman. It was also, oh, you look so good today, as if, you know, oh, fuck. And, and anything I feel, this area is anything but supportive. I feel like I'm on, a, on display. I've always felt that as a free show. And, uh, and every time the, uh, the fan is, uh, is, coming on, is coming on to me in a bar, as a joke, of course, because they're not really interested, just a big joke, Every time there's a fan who tells me now, oh, you look beautiful, I go, oh, yeah, do you want to fuck with me? And they, say, and, and they go like this, and I say, bye, <laughs> you know. Not interested to lose my time even just talking with you because you don't have anything to bring me, to bring me yeah. by talking. When they say how beautiful you look, do you think they're putting you down at the same time? Do you think it's a compliment when they say that? Or did you find it as a compliment? Or is it I so just fed up because they always say that, and I know I'm beautiful. I don't. I certainly don't, don't need, need fags to feel beautiful mm -hmm. because they have, they made me feel like shit for years. So I don't need them. All of those years, shit. <laughs> yeah. So I don't need them to make me feel beautiful. And now suddenly I'm beautiful. It's like okay, bye. I had the same face before, just like very little, according to me, superficial changes. <sighs> She has a heart on. <laughs> Woo, put this on fast. <laughs> Is it real? I yes. Woo! God. <laughs> She hasn't had a hard on for a long time. Oh God, are you happy? <laughs> Let's celebrate. Okay, we're talking about sex. So how was sex when you were trying to be a gay man and you were trying to sleep with other gay men? I was, um, it was interesting. It was interesting because basically with gay men I couldn't be myself. I couldn't talk about what I wanted. I had to I was and also I was just under the impression that it was that it was me that I was really bad sexually. There was no like that I, I was I was bad a bad cocksucker was bad Etc. 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 The only thing I liked about sex with gay men was getting fucked. That was it. Uh, it was really hard to have a sex life with gay men because I, like, I think that in all the person who can understand or who can feel what 
what is what I have essentially that I that I say it's a it's woman it's woman and not man, and all the people who can the most um, get it, it's usually people I sleep with. So it was a problem with straight with gay men, even though I was looking like a little boy, a very feminine one, even though. Um, even though like they could be externally a little bit attracted to me, when we would go to bed, like they would feel that there was something there that was essentially woman and that they could a female and that they could not just not deal with that because gay men are attracted to to men. A gay man is a, somebody who identifies as a man and who is attracted to other people who identify as men. And we know how gay men are, are into straight acting, so it's like, it was extremely hard to have a sex life with gay men. And I think, I, I can say that I've never felt that, I've never, I feel that there's not just the one gay man I've slept with, and I've slept with a lot of gay men for uh, fun or for money. When I started to work, it was as a boy, and I can say that not, no, in the one I slept for fun, not one of them really enjoyed it and mm -hmm. really had a good time. <laughs> and so therefore, what kind of a time did you have? A horrible time. It's really, it's really awful to sleep with someone and you feel he doesn't like it, you feel he doesn't like your body, yeah. you feel he doesn't like your soul. So it's a nightmare. Mm -hmm. As soon as, one interesting thing is, as soon as I started wearing skirts and dresses, my sex life dropped to near zero. In fact, uh, how many men? I think I was with one, no, it was, it was just very, all of a sudden went very, very little. Um, and, it, I'm, and I was really pissed off at that mm -hmm. because people would say, well, I guess you're going to have to make a decision between wearing skirts and getting, and getting sex. And I was really upset because like, it wasn't a decision I could make. I had to wear, this, it, I was expressing myself that I, it's something I had to do. And the idea that I was going to lose out, you know, so I, that, that it just really upset me. At the same time, I just said, well, this is more important than getting laid all the time. And I, when I thought about it, some, most of the people who had, I'd gotten laid, most of the men I'd gotten laid by were not worth it anyways. Like, to, they weren't worth, wait, um, they weren't worth rearranging my life to fit them. So I just said, fine, forget it. They weren't all that hard and bad anyways. I just, I, I just didn't have a good idea about myself, a low self-esteem. I, I, even though, no, it's not true, because I, I always thought that I was really cute, that I was really nice, that I was ni a really nice person, extremely generous, but still my body wasn't what they wanted to get between their, between their legs, between their arms and everything. They want a male body, and I had something that was really neuter. It was really something in between really thinny, really, really androgynous, so it was like too much for them. They want a male body, they don't want like... Um, and they want a male body and they want a male yeah. dick. Like, I had like, my dick was four inch in erection at that time. That's not the idea, the idea of, of a great, huge, big, muscular... Were they coming on to you? No. No. <laughs> Why? Or if they were, it was like... It was... They were at the very beginning, when I looked much more male young and male, but as soon as I started to I assert my own identity and my like visual identity and how I wanted to look, which was just not their attitude, they wanted someone who looked male, and I didn't fit that. And I started getting less and less and less and less. So as soon as I started asserting my own identity in whatever way, they were running, or at least not having a thing to do with me. This is something that dykes and fags don't understand. Okay. That the men who sleep with us are not, are not like, I don't think they're straight. I mean, they're straight identified, I don't think they're totally straight. But I mean, they have to understand that gay men don't want to fuck with us. Like, fags understand this more than dykes, I think, because fags perfectly know that when they see us, they don't want to fuck with us. But I, mm -hmm. often I talk, I talk with, with friends and they, they just don't understand. They, they're always trying to introduce me to some gay man and they're going, oh yeah, he will like you, oh yeah, he will like you. And I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like what do you think? He's gonna stay, but I, I know, and I ask, is he gay? And it's like, forget it, he won't come with me. Gay men don't like us, period. 
Okay, women. Alex. They don't like. They don't want to have sex with women. Let's talk about you sex with straight men. I guess as a woman. So yeah. start there. How was it? Better. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, for, for the first time in my life, there I was sleeping with um, with men, and they were they really enjoyed touching my body. They really they really liked my legs, my feet, my face, my neck, my ass, my my whole body, and they really enjoyed it, and they like really taste it and eat it and with fans it was like they were touching me with the tip of their fingers because it was like ugh, they were like kind of disgusted by my body but when I started to see with straight men like I was like really surprised and really excited about having them really like going like Rawr! like this and I was like woo <laughs> so sex with straight men you were talking about sex with straight sex men sex with straight men was awful it was wonderful because like it was getting like, I was getting this straight man was attracted to me sexually. Finally, someone was attracted, attracted to, to me sexually. sexually. You were okay, sexually. let's go to the sexual part. Sexually, he came, he initiated it gently. He stroked my hair, he was gentle. He didn't use his cock like a battering ram, um, which was really nice because we, I had, for the first time with anyone I had had, what I'd seen at that time was the best oral sex I'd ever had. In fact, it was almost fun. I was enjoying it, and it was just really nice. And um, I had a really good time. But <laughs> the problem with it was that emotionally I couldn't deal with it because all he wanted me for was sex on his terms, when he wanted it and not when he didn't. He didn't even fact, in fact, he didn't want to have anything to do with me outside of the, that half hour every seven days, every week. And it was really, that really disturbed me because we had up until then had a friendship that that was gone, totally gone. And I don't think it was my fault. I think it was basically that he couldn't, all of a sudden he flipped out because I was, we were having sex. So that's my, at the same time, that, that was the best sex I'd had, but it was also the worst. And it also told, at that point, I realized that I no longer, I really just don't want a thing to do with men. I'm sexually attracted to men physically, <laughs> period, nothing else, and uh, and I had to deal with that. And I'm attracted to genetic women on every other single level, um, spiritually, emotionally, politically. Like I li I've been living with women. All my friends are women. My life is with women, period, not with men. I don't have one male friend. So, uh, so on one hand, so I used to say I was bi, which was this kind of weird bisexuality where I, my life, my my life was really like cut into. I was sleeping with men, but period, I was doing not, I wasn't doing anything else than uh, fucking with them, and I, all the rest of my life was with women, and um, I suppose that what I needed to have those two things together is someone of my own gender. <laughs> I also met V, who. Um, I became, became very good friends with, 
And around March when I decided, okay, I, you know, realized this is where I am. I am a transsexual and that's it. Then I started hanging out with Guy a lot. Also, you know, I had the time and it was full time as as my as Andrew Philippa, which was wonderful. Um, and I spent a lot of time with Bee, and I fell in love with her totally. And it was really nice. It was exactly what you said. Here was someone I could talk. To, she could tell me things about her life, and going, "That happened to me, 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 this, and yeah, hey, that's me." All of it. It was all me, and it was like the first time in my life, and I could talk about sex openly. I could talk about everything in my life with her. And I was always like this gender fuck fag, so I was thinking, of course, about being in a relationship or. Uh, being sexually attracted for even one night stand with uh, to do it with other um, gender fuck <laughs> people mm -hmm. and um, so and I met her and she was really great and she was really nice and she made me realize many things about me and I was extremely attracted to her and uh, was she different from everything everyone else that you previously been attracted yeah to? because she exactly understood me. I was at that time as a fag in bars. I was a gender fuck fag, but still introducing myself as a fag. And she deferred, like, an hour after we were together, like, just when we arrived in the bed, she told me, you know, you two, you'll have to pass by this one day. <laughs> so how did she, Well, she touched my nipples, and she touched my breast, and she, and she just, and I reacted, and she just said, well, you're a transsexual, <laughs> and I said, oh, I, I don't know, well, it was great because I knew it, but I needed someone to tell me that I was, I, and I, did, I didn't need anyone to tell me I was a transsexual, I needed another transsexual to tell me that, yes, I was one, me too, and so it was really great. I mean, when we met for the first time, and before... Her and me behind the camera? Yeah, be, like... Me and Jan, the other, and Jan the, other, the other gender troublemaker <laughs> back there. We met at the Euclid, um, and on, on one night, and you were the only person I was attracted. I, I mean, I definitely saw you, and you were like it. You were the only person there that I was really interested in, and I, and like, I don't know. I don't. Even, I couldn't even tell you if there was anybody there who was even interesting at all because I just didn't see them. Just you. And I've told you this before, but I think it's good to tell you now. I mean, so in a whole group of theater, a whole theater, and the Euclid's big enough, and it was fairly big that night, I mean, I picked out one person who at that point I thought was, I didn't even think of you, I, I, as far as I knew, you were like a genetic woman. It didn't, but I just went, this, I like this person, this person's interesting. I think she's gorgeous. Because she was wearing a short skirt. <laughs> I noticed the short skirt, it wasn't because of the short skirt. It had nothing to do with the short <laughs> skirt. Um, but anyway, since so when we talked and later, then it was like really, and I got that charge, and I didn't really. I mean, at the time, I wasn't going. Well, you know, inside, what is this? I'm just going. This is me. <laughs> this is wonderful. something um, about transsexual bodies that is magical and I love it <laughs> and I love touching transsexual <laughs> bodies so that is that incidentally the first time I I, I heard of all the anti-gay statements by other transsexuals, I was a little upset. And then I started realizing, well, wait a minute. Because I used to be really political and think, oh yeah, you know, I've got to fight homophobia, wherever. And I heard statements that sounded like the worst forms of homophobia, but the thing is, then I started getting the, the attacks by gay men. And I realized, no, this is not homophobia. This is a response to very horrible, gender suppressive and oppressive behavior coming from gay men. 
And it's very overt, and it's very deliberate, and it's very, very awful. 